But the first thing we're going to talk about is uh, Rust itself. Uh, know thine enemy. Uh, rust is uh, the result of the exposure of iron or steel to water and air. Uh, when this happens, uh, there's a little dance that the electrons do, uh, marching back and forth, making different ions, and the result is that um, the water helps the iron combine with the oxygen and you get Fe2O3, two iron atoms, three oxygen atoms, and this creates what is called orange rust. And uh, you can see this plate right here. This is a um, this is a cast iron thickness of planar bed that um, was discarded for one reason or the other. I think we have a couple of scratches in it. But anyway, Drew and I um, rusted this over the last few days by applying uh, salt water to it. The salt actually helps exacerbate the rust because uh, remember I told you this is a little dance of electrons and ions and salt is conductive, the uh, salt water is, uh, is conductive and so it's conducive uh, to this uh, electrolytic dance that these uh, things do and you get the rust much faster. The, um, the, the, there is such a thing as good rust, by the way. Um, as I said, the Fe2O3 is bad rust. It's red rust. Okay, But if you were to take this one step further in that little ion dance, uh, you would get Fe3O4. Uh, that's three atoms of iron and four atoms of oxygen, and that creates black rust or black oxide or bluing or browning. It's called all of that, and this is a uh, this is actually a protective coat. Um, the reason that black oxide protects and uh, red rust doesn't is that red rust is flaky. Uh, as you, it, it, it comes off. As you can see, I can I can do this, and then they, they just blow the rust away. And with the rust goes, of course, some of uh, some of this uh, thickness planar table. It, um, it it takes the dense molecular structure of of iron and turns it into a lattice work that just breaks off uh, ridiculously easily. Uh, in other words, it just destroys the strength. The black Iron oxide doesn't do that. It um, it actually preserves the strength. It's a dense molecule in itself, and it prevents the um, the uh, oxygen from reaching in underneath it and taking the rust uh, any uh, deeper. Um, the conditions in which red rust forms, uh, you must have, of course, air and water present. Uh, the water can be humidity in the air itself. At a relative humidity of 50%, uh, cast iron will rust, just being exposed to that humid atmosphere. At a relative humidity of 80%, steel will rust. Uh, steel and iron will also rust if there are great differentials between um, the um, uh, temperature uh, in um, between day and night. Uh, your uh, uh, most of us, uh, well, not most of us, but many of us have our tools in unheated spaces, either in garages or sheds. Uh, they get warm in the day and then it cools off at night. As the, the air cools off quicker than the tools do and then there, the water condenses on the, uh, on the iron and the steel uh, and the steel begins to, uh, to rust. Uh, you can solve this problem by changing the, uh, the environment. You can either add a dehumidifier to take uh, the moisture out of the air and reduce the humidity uh, to below 50%, uh, or you can heat your shop. Uh, either, either one of those will, um, will uh, put an end to, end to the rust. They, those, uh, those may not be an option for you. If that's the case, then you have to take other steps to prevent the rust. And I've got some of those other steps right here. Um, 
The first, the, the first thing is, is you've got to remember we're going to be forming a barrier between the, between the metal and um, the, uh, the water in the air that's trying to get at it. Now, um, we continually, continually talk about applying paste wax uh, to the metal and how uh, this insulates it from the, um, from the humidity and uh, from the oxygen. It's an excellent barrier. Wax is one of the best barriers you can build up. Not only that, as long as you're not sliding your headstock back and forth or passing wood over the table, uh, it will last for a long time. You can put a nice coat of wax on your tools before you put them away in the late fall, and it will still be there when you get back in the, um, in the spring. Uh, a lot of uh, old-time... Uh, metal workers would keep an oily rag around the shop and whenever they would use a tool they would wipe it down with oil after they were done using it. Now there's there's a reason for this. Um, first of all, those tools tend to be very precise and the um, uh, the acids and the salt in in the um, in the liquid that your fingers can leave on the on the, the tool can rust them. And so you would uh, you would uh, have an engineer square like uh, this, which is incredibly rusty. We'll get we'll we'll make this much better in a little while. Uh, you would grab it with your hand, put it down and it would immediately begin to rust where your fingerprints were left. So wiping it off with an oily rag uh, was, was just a preventative. It's a good preventative. Um, it makes things a little greasy, but, uh, but they don't get rusty. Uh, if you don't like if you don't like the greasy feel that oil gives you, you can use lanolin. Um, an old uh, German uh, uh, machinist that I used to work with at uh, Wright Patterson Air Force Base uh, mixed up one part anhydrous lanolin to five parts of mineral spirits and kept some rags soaked in that uh, around his shop. He would uh, wipe things down before he put them back in his tool case. Uh, sometimes, sometimes he would wipe the whole the whole uh, lathe or uh, or mill down. It did a good job. The lanolin doesn't evaporate. It's like like the wax. It will stay there as long as you don't disturb it. Um, and it doesn't feel greasy. It's just a very thin, clear coat, um, and it's actually good for your hands if you if you uh, get it on there. In addition to to um, that homemade lanolin remedy, you can also buy some things at various uh, at um, at stores to uh, to protect it. There are some good spray on. Um, uh, spray-on stuff. Uh, for example, uh, Sterrett, uh, the makers of those wonderful uh, uh, measuring devices we all know and love, have a product called M1. Sterrett M1 is a good spray-on rust preventative. Uh, if you go out and you look at the internet now, you'll see that uh, one of the favorites, something that's getting the, the best reviews, is uh, uh, stuff called T9. It's made by Boshield. Uh, this is a uh, spray-on um, it has rust and corrosion protection, uh, and, it ha and it's waterproof, and it's, a, and it's also a lubricant. Um, all, all three of those, so you could you could spray this on and use the tool uh, at the at the same time. This is, um, like I said, this is this is the stuff that is currently getting all the rave reviews. I would I would uh, every now and then somebody comes out with something better. Uh, those of you who are still using WD-40, uh, yes, that's what it was originally formulated for. The WD stands for water displacement. It was originally formulated to prevent rust, but now there are much better things on the on the market than WD-40. Um, this being this being just one of them. Uh, the uh, uh, if you're a machinist, you may know about Waylube. Uh, Waylube is a, uh, a rust prevention and lubricant uh, that a lot of ma a lot of machinists use on uh, lathes and mills. Um, that's uh, uh, that's good stuff. And you can also get now. Remember, I told you about the oily claws that machinists like to keep around. You can get wipes that have a uh, rust preventative in them. The, this is. Uh, these are called tool wipes. Um, it, there's a cleaner and degreaser in here. It's anti-static, 
probably the same stuff that is in those uh, dryer sheets. If there's a rust remover here and a cor uh, corrosion inhibitor for multi-metals, I don't have any tool made out of multi-metal, but I do have a few made out of iron, and I'm, I presume that this will be good for it. But anyway, it's it's um, it's uh, you can feel it; it's wet but not greasy, and you just wipe it on the on the uh, the steel, and it will protect. Um, I would uh, I would imagine as long as you keep this wet, it'd be nice to have a little film canister or something to put these in. As long as you keep uh, keep this from evaporating, it will uh, it will continue to do the job until it's time to switch to a to another. Uh, it also look at that also removes rust from my hands. So. Um, uh, at any rate, those are some of the commercial things that uh, that you can uh, you can do. Um, sometimes, sometimes you get uh, a tool is shipped to you, and it's in a paper that kind of uh, has a waxy appearance to it. This is called VPI paper wrap, and it's it's an oily paper. the The wax or the oil actually evaporate from the paper. They condense on the surface of the tool, and they prevent it from rusting. You might want to save that paper. It's a good thing to keep the tool wrapped in. It's uh, and you can buy VPI paper from from uh, places like MSC. Um, I've got some of those resources there on the blackboard if you want to, if you want to refer to them. Um, there are also vapor tabs. Okay, these are little tabs that you can buy. They're, they're full of the same stuff uh, that uh, probably is in the VPI paper. You peel them off and you stick them inside a, uh, a drawer. And for about a year, they will keep whatever is in that drawer from, from rusting. Um, the, uh, it actually says here they're good for up to a cubic uh, one cubic foot. They will protect the tools within in, in one cubic foot. Um, there's also camphor. Uh, Drew has already told you about camphor, how it evaporates and condenses on the tools and coats it with a light, thin oil to prevent it from spreading uh, uh, rust. Um, and uh, there, there are also are uh, desiccants. Uh, these things actually absorb the moisture. They don't coat the tools at all. They absorb the moisture. We sell one here at uh, uh, Shopsmith. It is full of silica gel, which is hydroscopic. That is, it absorbs water. It'll absorb water much faster than it can condense on your tools, keep the uh, inside of your toolbox dry. And uh, when the uh, silica gel gets full of water, all you have to do is put it in the oven for an hour or so and you dry it out again and it gets completely usable. It isn't throwaway like the uh, camper tablets or the uh, tool tabs are. Um, that's, uh, that's, that's the, uh, the uh, short version, the 50, the 50 cent version of rust prevention. It is not all that hard. You either take the moisture away or you protect the, um, you protect the, uh, the steel and the iron from moisture. Well, what happens though if, what happens if the tool is allowed to rust like we've rusted this plate right here? Well, there are some, there are some uh, good ways to, to, to take the rust off. Um, let me put on some rubber gloves here because I'm going to be handling some nasty stuff. I always feel like I'm about about four years old trying to get into a sweater. You know, you never can do that without the help of your mother. All right, there we go. Um, key layers. There are types of chemicals that actually bond with the rust and hold it in solution so that you can wipe it off the tool. Uh, the the uh, navel gel is a chelator like this. It has um, uh, chemicals in it. At the end, I'm going to put a little bit on this cloth, and then I'm going to rub it on this area. 
and you will see here when I hold it up to you that it does one heck of a job of taking the rust off. Now it doesn't remove the rust stains. The rust actually stains the metal somewhat. Look at that. Gone. Okay? That cool? Okay? What's happening is the chemical in here, the chelator, combines with the um, with the rust and then um, holds it in solu solution, in this case in the gel, so that you can you can wipe it away. Uh, it's, it, it, it works very quickly. It doesn't remove the pits, but it, it, it uh, removes, uh, removes the rust. Um, the, you can make your own chelator, by the way, with this, blackstrap molasses. Um, if you uh, dissolve one part of blackstrap molasses in nine parts water, paint it on the metal, let it dry, you have to actually let it dry and then wipe it away with a damp cloth. It'll wipe the rust away. In some cases, it takes several applications in order to, in, in order to do this. For something uh, as rusted as badly as this, maybe one or two applications. For something with much deeper rust, uh, prob probably five, six, seven uh, applications. But this, this is a, a good and a cheap uh, key layer. Um, acids will uh, etch away the rust, uh, especially phosphoric acids. Some acids like muriatic acid, oxalic acid, hydrochloric acid work much too quickly and will actually etch away the metal as well as the rust. But phosphoric acid works very slowly. It works quickly on the rust, but slowly on the metal, so it doesn't etch too deep. And um, uh, it uh, also forms iron phosphate, which like black oxide actually is a protective coat that prevents rust. This is called DuPont Quick Prep and um, the, uh, it's, it's used by, in a lot of automotive stores, uh, automotive body stores, as a preparation for the metal before you paint it. It's uh, phosphoric acid dissolved in alcohol and the alcohol serves as a degreaser and the phosphoric acid serves as a rust remover. It's, uh, it's a little pricey, actually it's a lot pricey. It doesn't work quite as well as navel jelly, okay, but it does work. And, it, and if I were going to paint this, uh, uh, this uh, thickness plinger bed here, I would probably use the navel jelly first uh, and then the quick prep before I, uh, I painted it just to make sure that everything was degreased and there was, um, and there was a protective coat on there. Um, so there's there's uses uses for that too. Boy, it does have a lot of alcohol in there. It smells like a brewery in here now. Um, the uh, uh, in addition to acids, the one other chemical thing that you can do is you can uh, do electrolytic rust removal. Uh, now remember I said that uh, forming rust was this little dance between uh, uh, electrons and ions and you can reverse the dance. You can run it backwards uh, simply by running the uh, electrical process backwards. You, can, you do this with a 12 volt car battery and some uh, sodium carbonate, not sodium bicarbonate, sodium carbonate, also known as washing soda. You can buy it in most grocery stores. I think Arm & Hammer puts out a brand called uh, Super Washing or Ultra Washing Soda. Um, take one tablespoon of soda per gallon of water, mix it up, uh, you'd have to buy, in this case, if we were de-rusting uh, this plate, you'd have to buy a tub big enough to hold it. Pour the water in so that it covers the table. It's got to cover the rusted part. You hook the negative part of your battery, the minus sign, the negative part of your battery, to the piece that you want to de-rust. Okay? Then you get yourself a piece of steel, a plate, anything. It, it just uh, uh, just a piece of steel, and you hook the positive wire to that piece of steel, and you put it in the solution, but don't let it touch the uh, the table. Okay? What will happen is the the is the ferrous oxide will jump off of the off of the uh, 
thickness planer uh, table and uh, come over and attach themselves to the steel plate. And in uh, about an hour, two hours, four hours, it'll, it, 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 the time varies with the size of the piece and um, uh, how much rust there is. All the rust will have actually migrated from, um, from the rusted piece to the steel plate and you'll have this completely devoid. You just take it down, wipe it, wipe it down to prevent it from rusting again, maybe put a little quick prep on it, and it's good to go. Um, the last the last thing that I have to show you about um, um, uh, rust removal is is uh, uh, what we mostly all deal with, and that is abrasive rust removal. Uh, you use we have sandpaper around our shop, and sandpaper is reasonably good at removing rust. It doesn't do all that well at removing the stains. This stuff, however, this these are rubber bonded uh, abrasive uh, uh, sticks. Well, actually, blocks. They're uh, they're put out. They're made by Craytex and put out of the name under the name uh, Rust um, Rust Erasers. And uh, let me let me get my Ben Casey gloves off here. Okay. This one is coarse. I needed to get the gloves off so I could feel which one was coarse and which one was fine. Um, the uh, look at that. There's the coarse one. It is just it is removing the rust and the stain. Look at that. I'll do a part portion here that I did with the table jelly so you can see how it how it removes the stain also. There you go. Look at that nice shiny, bright. That was that was with actually it's not coarse. It's the it's the medium. The coarser the coarser would, I think just puts too much stra uh, scratches. Then you go back. And I'm using a, a kind of a circular pattern here with the fine. And that that uh, makes it shine even more. There you go. Nicely done. Now, in addition, in addition to um, sandpaper, rubber bonded abrasives, probably the best rust remover that I've found, bar none, um, are what is called surface conditioners. Uh, this is a this is a uh, um, a piece of. Uh, Fiberglass that has been impregnated by with a very coarse rust. It's sold in a normal hardware store as a stripper. You can strip paint with this. It's also great for rust removal, especially um, especially uh, uh, extremely rusty parts that have been left out uh, outdoors. It takes it off in a in a, uh, a big hurry, but it leaves the surface heavily scratched. Um, but if you have to take both paint and rust off, this is something that you should know about. Um, I've got over here. Let's go to the. Um, let's refocus on the on the uh, Mark V here for a minute. Okay. important, I hope. Anyway, um, this is a, um, uh, a quick lock, uh, three inch quick lock, uh, uh, I don't know what you call it, doodad, backing plate, whatever. It mounts in, in the chuck. Uh, you can buy various things that just sort of quickly lock in place in this. Uh, this happens to be um, a surface conditioning pad. Uh, you can buy these surface conditioning pads in, in coarse, uh, medium, and uh, very fine, and they will, uh, they will remove rust. I'm going to start with a medium here. I have, um, I have this engineer square that is just horribly rusted, and I'm going to attack the, uh, the uh, handle of it. Okay. 
I'll come up. I'll come up close to uh, to one of these cameras. Which one? Here. Look at that. See the that cool? Whoa! It was like this, and now it's like that. Okay. Rust on. Rust off. Rust on. Rust off. Okay. The um, uh, in addition to uh, these surface conditioning strips, let me, uh, you can also get this little bristly pad. Now this is, this is interesting. This is actually rubber bonded abrasive. It's got an 80 grit abrasive in the rubber, but the rubber is bristles. It's like a, it's like a scrub brush. Um, and uh, it, it mounts in these little quick lock backing pads and you can let me do another part of this. There. Go over here again. Look at that. That also does an excellent job. Um, the uh, there we go. It leaves a few more scratches than the um, than the uh, surface conditioner, okay? But that's the medium surface conditioner. We could go finer, and I imagine that if you looked around, you could find these bristles um, finer, uh, finer also. But those uh, those things will remove um, we remove rust a lot faster than uh, just uh, scrubbing with sandpaper. Now. <clears throat> I've got several things. I've got several things at the end uh, of this that I want to tell you that don't really fit into this um, in, into this uh, uh, into my outline. Uh, the first is the first is that every now and then you uh, you have parts that you get a rust look. They're welded together uh, by rust. Uh, when that happens, you need what is called a penetrant in order to in order to penetrate the rust and um, uh, and help dissolve it away. Um, a lot of you use WD-40 for this. It used to be a good one. Uh, it is a penetrating oil, but there are some better things on the market right now. Once again, go out on the internet. The thing that uh, is getting is getting the nod from everybody is is something called PB Blaster. Um, it uh, it has a catalyst that helps it penetrate uh, more, and it also has a lubricant to, to uh, help you back off those rusted uh, those rusted bolts. Um, if uh, you can also use something that most of you have around the shop uh, for easing screws in, and that is a little a little stick of beeswax. Um, take the the bolt and the nut that are frozen, okay? Heat it up with a torch, and then apply the beeswax to it uh, directly to the threads. The beeswax will wick, will go liquid, and the liquid will wick its way down into the threads, providing both lubricant and breaking the uh, and breaking the rust lock. Both of the both of these work uh, work uh, very well. Uh, this probably works a little better from what from the little bit of uh, experience that I. I've had uh, uh, I've had with it. Um, the uh, okay the uh, the 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 last thing um, that I want to I want to tell you is that is that uh, let's go back to what I mentioned earlier about black oxide Fe three O four that is a a protectant. For some reason, it's not popular among among uh, tool owners, but uh, and probably for for uh, for at least one good reason. If you if you put it say on the sole of a plane, it would rub off sooner or later. But you could easily use it on the sides and the other portions of a uh, of a plane to protect them from uh, from rust. Uh, there are two ways to turn uh, to uh, to uh, put black oxide on. One is with gun bluing. 
Uh, this is a chemical, caustic chemical, which uh, which you apply in layers. You apply it. Um, the 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 tool actually develops a rust patina. Uh, you you lightly buff that. You apply it again. It develops another rust patina. And you keep on going until until you've got a smooth coat of black oxide. Or you can do what old timey gunsmiths used to do, and that is they would apply water. Let this develop a patina of red rust, and then boil it. Yeah, boil it, really. And uh, the uh, the boiling water turns the red rust to black rust. Okay, you once again, just like the uh, the gun bluing, you have to do it in um, in steps. You may have to apply the water, let it rust, and then boil it several times before you get a nice uh, coat of of black oxide. But it uh, it. Uh, it uh, does a it does a nice job. Finally, the best thing that you can do to keep your small tools from rusting is store them in a wooden toolbox. A wooden toolbox. Wood is hygroscopic, just like the the uh, desiccant that uh, that I mentioned before. It absorbs moisture before it can condense on your tools, and tools will remain rust-free much longer in a wooden box than they will in a metal box. So, over the next uh, few sauna sessions, we're going to be building a really dynamite wooden toolbox. So, with that, uh, that's all I have to say. I have to say. Mm -hmm.